Welcome to Allies or Enemies, where we talk about games and how they work for two players. This time, we are looking at Dune Imperium. The newest Dune board game is designed by Paul Denon and is based on a movie that will hopefully be coming out one day, and a book that one of us has finished and the other has been halfway through for a very long time. Dune shares a bit of DNA with Denon's popular Clank series, but uses that deck building with worker placement and a combat slash betting system in a combination that, while it may not be entirely new, does feel fresh and definitely feels like Dune. One of the cool things about Dune Imperium is how closely it sticks to the theme. On your turn, you will spend cards to visit various spaces in order to gain political favor, explore the harsh lands of Arrakis for precious water and spice, commit troops to a tough war of attrition, or otherwise use your cunning all to score a point or two towards victory. That is, of course, just the bones, however. There are also card powers that trigger combos or can be turned into money or battle strength if saved and revealed at the end of your turn. And there are also secret intrigue cards that can provide sneaky abilities in and out of combat. The rulebook's fairly thin, but the gameplay has a nice amount of depth and various systems that all interact with each other in interesting ways. Game's over once one faction ekes its way to 10 victory points or the military deck runs dry, and then a new emperor is named. Unlike the other Dune game that was recently re-released and needed a big group, this Dune is a 2-4 player game, and it works well at all counts. Because players only play one worker per turn, things move quickly, and usually between the options your cards provide and the things you need, your path forward tends to be capped at a few sensible options. At two players, you add a bot player that acts as a wrench in the works, filling up spaces and bidding for combat. We have had mixed luck with these kind of bots, but this is one of the best we have come across. It's easily controlled with a deck of cards that makes it clear where it goes and what it does. So it never slows play, and it does get in the way enough to be frustrating in a good way. Because the bot means that there are never less than three factions, there isn't a huge change in available spaces at any player count, which is good because the balance works well. The big point of variability here are the leaders. Each leader has a unique, innate power, as well as another power that comes into play every time you play your Signet Ring card. They aren't perfectly balanced, but none of them are particularly game-breaking, and we have found that they all drive your decisions in different ways. There are also a lot of different paths to victory, which is interesting for a game that hinges on so few points. You need to do a little bit of everything, but it's viable to focus more on military or politics or just try and get lucky with intrigue cards or build a solid card engine and just buy yourself some points. That's not to say that the game will change drastically each time, but there's more variability than you might expect. This is the one section that could be slightly mixed for some. The card quality is fine, You might want to sleeve them, but it isn't a strict necessity. The art on them, however, is great. It is all presumably taken from the upcoming film, but it is nice that it is all actual artwork instead of stills. It's fun to use Oscar Isaacs or Batista, and it adds personality. The wooden meeple and cubes for battle are also fine, although there is an upgrade pack coming out in a couple of months that swaps out pretty much everything for plastic miniatures. The tricky is the board, which some think is a bit sparse, but then again, it is Dune, so it's kind of meant to be a tough, barren wasteland, and in our opinion, it captures that feeling really well, keeping it sleek and clean with a lot of beige and black. 
I'm not going to beat around the sandworm here. Dune Imperium might be our favorite new game of 2020, and it could climb way up the overall list as we get more opportunity to play it in 2021. It does a terrific job of capturing a tricky theme, and it does it by combining familiar mechanics in some really engaging ways. There's not a lot of rules overhead and a playtime that stays around an hour, but there is some depth a lot of paths to victory, and some real nail-biting points races that come down to the end and usually hinge on one or two clever moves or missed opportunities. It feels both tense and fun and will appeal to people ready to move on to the next step from gateway games like Clank, as well as to vets who want a mid-complexity game that punches a little bit above its weight. And perhaps most importantly, it's going to more than satisfy Dune fans. And that is it. Have you played Dune Imperium? Let us know what you think. Also, what were your other favorite games of 2020? And please do like and subscribe. And hopefully we will see you all next time for another game.